G'day folks, this is from a short I released earlier. I'm using an ancient fly press to broach um, an aluminium part. The broaching is for the part to sit on a carburetor shaft. Here's a look at my ancient fly press. I thought I'd try and stabilise the press a bit by cutting out some bits of sheet metal and putting them under the feet to see what happens. And I was surprised, it worked remarkably well. There are lots of things wrong with this process and in this video I'm attempting to improve them. Due to problems with my lathes I ended up getting these made by someone else. Unfortunately they made them out of 6061. I would normally use 2011 and that has never created the burring that I'm getting with the 6061 on this broaching job. Here I'm just turning some parts in the manual lathe to get the stripper plate closer to the part. It's all part of trying to tidy the process up a bit. Now the press is going up and the brooch is staying down, which is not the way it's meant to work. The lock screw has a plastic nut in it and it's jamming up against the ram so that it can't actually tighten fully against the part of the brooch which is inside the ram. I managed to tighten it enough to retrieve the brooch here you can see the problem, the plastic really is tied up against the ram. Being very careful I managed to use the parting tool to reduce the plastic by 2mm and now there's enough space to really tighten that handle well. This knob really surprised me because the thread seems to go all the way up inside the knob which was pleasant because that saved me having to relieve the thread. Now we have better clearance to the stripper and the brooch can go all the way into the part. This is at two times speed because to be honest it takes quite a bit of force and I was just finding it difficult to get the brooch through the part. Had I been able to get a good swing on the press handle I'm sure it would have been a lot easier but with a camera, tripod, lights all in the way it makes it pretty difficult. I was having to turn the bars with two hands up the top of the press. There's not a lot of room around my press anyway but my camera decided it was more important than the operator. This is the burr I was getting on the underside of the part and I believe it was because it was 6061 rather than 2011. I found it impossible to remove this burr, all I did was damage myself or the part. Here's a CAD model of the brooch. I actually turned this on an Emco Compact 5 PC that I owned at the time. And then it went off to a toolmaker to be ground and the for the heat treatment. Here's the Emco, tiny little thing, made as a training lathe, which is handy because it was my first excursion into CNC machining. Fortunately the software that came with it was really quite good for learning about CNC. I thought there might be someone out there who'd be interested so I actually dug up the software, installed it on a virtual machine and we can have a look at some of the ways it worked. I was never able to make a mouse work with this program way back when so it was all key commands using function keys, enter, spacebar it really took a bit of getting used to. There's the brooch called up and there it's showing the toolpath and the tailstock was able to be added. Um, there are two ways of simulating. One is a rendered view and the other is with the toolpath. There's the rendered view. Quite big. Not very useful really. Does give you an idea what's going on. Took me a while to find the simulation and in fact it was in machining and an empty cut and there you can see it's taking the first roughing cut, the second roughing cut, the last roughing cut of the main body, then we're down round the end. You can see we do a couple of little jiggly roughing cuts for the actual teeth. And I thought I'd hurry it up a bit so we didn't all buy it, die of boredom. And now we're doing the finishing cut and going round each tooth and that's it. 
As I was completely unable to remove that burr, I decided to put them back in the lathe and to actually face it off. Here the tools positioned so I could set up the camera. And I'm not talking about this. Moving the tool in manual mode so that I can get it clearer of the part and actually tell it to home and start the program. Right, edited out most of the homing sequence there. Here the tools coming up to the burr, removing the burr and making terrible noises because that boring bar obviously needs attention after the knocking around it took when I jammed it into the part. Here you can see the burr is gone but the finish is atrocious and the parts are no good anyway because of that large bit missing on the right hand side there. As they say in the cooking shows, here's one I prepared earlier. Alright, this has been a bit of a different video. Let me know in the comments what you thought of it. Thank you for watching.